Aha, good point. Uh, the question was asked about reverence. Two answers to that question. Um, in Western Australia, okay, it's fairly clear that we're heading into a dark age. A dark age happens when we've exceeded the carrying capacity of the environment and the environment can no longer sustain the levels of complexity that we've been living through. Now, in Western Australia, we did a, um, uh, myself and a group of other people did a comparative study of dark ages to look at what can shorten a dark age and what can stop a dark age from being so dark. And we found that there were six things that will make a crucial difference to a dark age. Number one, number one, we need to build community. We need to build supportive and caring communities. People who live in supportive and caring communities are less impacted by a dark age than anyone else. The people who are most impacted by a dark age are people who are living isolated, individualistic lives in the community with no support and community around them. We need to build community as if our life depends on it, because it does. So that's number one. People who build supporting communities is only the first step. The second step, the second step happens. In a dark age, what happens is that before the dark age happens, an increase in the complexity of the community will actually increase the quality of your life. But there's a transition, and the transition is we cross a threshold where an increase in complexity starts to reduce the quality of your life, and we have now crossed that threshold. What that means is the degree to which you simplify your life, the degree to which you prevent yourself being dependent on complex systems, that will actually improve the quality of your life. And we have crossed that. So the second task to shorten or end a dark age is to simplify our life. Radical simplicity is, in, in, is the way to improve the quality of our life. As things get faster and faster and faster, what we need to do is to go slower and slower and slower. And as we go slower, we'll improve the quality of our life. So that's the second step. The third step, one of the things that ends a dark age is creativity. And it's shown that the most creative communities are those communities that are most least impacted by a dark age. We need to maximise community creativity on a scale that has never been attempted before. And once you find creativity, the interesting thing about creativity is that social creativity, spiritual creativity, reverence as you call it, um, technological creativity, uh, economic, political, social creativity, um, environmental creativity, technological creativity, artistic and cultural creativity. Creativity in one area tends to have effect on creating creativity in other areas. So we need to maximise creativity in all of those areas. That's step number three. Step number four. What happens in a dark age is you get a rise in the level of violence. That level of violence occurs within families, between families, within communities, between communities, within the state, between states. It's universal within dark ages. You find a rising level of violence. And there's only one thing that can prevent the rise of violence, and that is we need to maximise the amount of non-violent resolution of conflict within our communities, within our families, within our states. So building non-violence as a way of solving problems is number four. Number five is an interesting one. Number five, the fifth thing we need to do in order to prevent or limit or slow down a dark age is we need to preserve knowledge. Now, it's a strange but true fact at the moment. The amount of scientific research that is being done at the moment is doubling every 18 months. But what is happening is as we double the amount of scientific research, the amount of wisdom in our community is being reduced to knowledge. The amount of knowledge is being reduced to understanding. The amount of understanding in our communities is being reduced to data. The amount of data is disappearing into the amount of noise. And the amount of noise leads to the rise of new superstition. Believe it or not, at the moment, surveys have shown that 18% of people in the United States believe that the sun goes around the Earth. Now, we've known that the Earth goes around the sun since the days of Copernicus. 70% of people in the United States believe that the world began 6,000 years ago and that humans are not descended from other uh, species of animals. That is superstition. And in a dark age, you get a rise in superstition. One of the problems we're facing at the moment is, believe it or not, we're losing a language every two weeks. We've got about 5,900 languages on the earth at the moment and we're losing one language every two weeks. 
When you lose a language, you also lose the ecological understanding on which that language is based. It's like burning an encyclopedia and we don't even know what's written on the pages of that encyclopedia. Once that knowledge is lost, not only do we lose the fact that we've learned knowledge that we once had, but we even lose the fact that we once had it. And it takes a thousand years to recover the knowledge that's lost. During the Roman Empire, you know, the Greeks and the Romans knew the world was round. In the Middle Ages, we went back to believing it was flat and it took Columbus and Magellan to teach the people that the world was in fact round again. That's the danger that happens in a, in a dark age. And so we need to preserve knowledge. One of the problems we've got at the moment is we're putting all of our knowledge into the internet and we're shutting our public libraries. Um, hello, the internet, if the internet collapses, what happens to all of the information that's stored on Wikipedia? It's not being stored as hard copy. We need to make sure it's stored as hard copy as well because that's going to be vitally important for the future of the world. And so preserving knowledge is the fifth step we need to in order to prevent a dark age or to limit or to make the age less dark. And the sixth one is an interesting one. What happens in a dark age is you get a rise in militant fundamentalism. You get a rise in heresy trials. You get a rise in, in inquisitions. You get a rise in all of this sort of stuff in which you get warring um, what I call not religions, a religion, the word religion actually comes from two, Greek, uh, two Latin words, re meaning again, and legion meaning to, to connect together. A religion brings us to get together. A deligion is what sets, sets us apart. And if you look at militant fundamentalism, militant Christianity, militant Judaism, militant Hinduism, militant Buddhism, what they actually do is they set people apart in warring fundamentalisms. So what we need is an integrative spirituality built around reverence for the living planet of which we're a part, not wanting to escape from the earth into some sort of idealised heaven, but based upon the fact that we are earthlings and we are connected to the earth, and what happens to the earth happens to us. The earth is my body. What we do to the earth, we do to our own selves. And so if we can do those six things, build community, simplify our life, maximise creativity, resolve problems, um, uh, through non-violence, preserve knowledge and build an integrative spirituality, then our dark age is going to be very short and it's not going to be very dark at all. But if we don't do those six things, watch out folks, it's a rough ride to the bottom and life for our children and our children's children will be nasty, brutish and short.